ignition on. Airbag error. Okay. Hello guys and welcome to another Car Expos video. So today we are working on a 2013 Skoda Octavia with active bonnet. So the, the airbag light is on and active bonnet is basically a pedestrian protection where when you hit something, uh, pedestrian, let's say, uh, the, the back of the bonnet lifts up. So it has like two pistons on the side that pushes the hinges up. And um, so this chap last night was driving, a bit of the tree fell off, he hit the tree and then damaged the, the grill, both grills, the middle grill, the bottom grill, and then those two pistons for this um, um, pedestrian protection popped up. Um, I scanned the car last night and uh, I'm just about to do an auto scan again, so I'll show you all the faults. I was aware of this system, but I never worked with it. So it's gonna be something new to me. Um, when I was checking last night, I did have, I think something in the engine control module or might be in the airbag module saying crash data stored. So I've ordered two new pistons and the bottom grill because the, the middle grill comes with a bumper and I don't know what the owner is gonna do with that. But uh, um, I will try to remove the pistons today because the new pistons come, comes tomorrow. I've got to pick it up uh, nine o'clock tomorrow morning at TPS. But I'll show you all the faults. All right, so it has quite a few faults here. Engine control module, brakes, air conditioning, central electrics, airbag. I'm just gonna do a report, so we're gonna check it all. So the engine control module, five faults. Let me go down. Diagnostic interface, I'm not, I'm not gonna concentrate on any other problem. I'm gonna just try to gather as much information as I, as I can from this airbag module or this active bonnet. So here on the angel control module, we have P160900 crash shutoff was triggered. Invalid data received from restraint control module. Okay, so let's bear that in mind. Then we have brakes, data error value received. Maybe that was all to do with the system. And then we have the air conditioning. Interesting enough, the air conditioning also function limitation due to crash signal. It's interesting. Central electrics. Nothing there. Airbag module, three faults. So igniter one for pedestrian protect, protection, resistance too high. And the same uh, igniter two as well. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know which one it is, so, but it's both sides, so it's one and two. And then pedestrian protection crash data is stored. B102D00. Passive, sporadic. Hmm. All right, okay, so it's passive, it's sporadic. So maybe changing the two igniters there, we, we're we not gonna need to, um, to mess with the airbag module, hopefully. I'm not quite sure. And then you have information control unit one, functional limitation due to missing message. So that's what we have here. We could mess around with the igniter, try to put um, try to put a resistor there, see if we can clear the faults, etc. But I do have two new igniters coming in tomorrow morning, so I don't think I'm gonna mess with that. I'm just gonna try to remove the ones that that, that we have there now. As soon as the rain stops a little bit, I don't know if I'm gonna have to remove from the bottom or from the top, but hopefully I can do it from the top. The bonnet still opens. But I've noticed it can't go far up enough. So an another thing, I don't know if I have to change the hinges or if can, the hinges can be reused. There's not that much damage. There's one dent right in the front of the bonnet and then the grills. That's it, basically. Nothing else. Right, so yeah. Let's try to remove those igniters. Let's see what happens. So the bonnet functions as it should. But what I've noticed, it doesn't go up far enough for me to put the, the holding rod 
or this stay rod that we have here. Let me, so as you see, I sh this rod should be going in there and um, it's not up enough for me to, to put in there in the place, in the right place. So the question is, are those hinges buggered or I need to reset them or something like that? I'm not quite sure yet. All right, to remove them is easier than I expected. Only has a 10 millimeter nut right at the back. You can actually pop them down if you want to as well. But there we go. So there's a little stud. 10 millimeter nut that holds in place. Now there's a little plastic plug at the back there. There we go. I'm gonna have to probably reuse it. I don't know if the new one comes with it. Now the connector, now the connector probably is gonna be the hardest part. It's that yellow plug just inside there. I already, like I mentioned, just done the other side. The other side was a lot easier. So it has a plastic tab that you have to pull out and then press it. Some metal clips. Mm, I think I'm gonna have to remove the. Yeah, I'm going to remove the wiper arms. Otherwise, we're not gonna. It's just gonna make the job a little bit harder. All right, so now, that should be okay now. Just a little red tab. Push it in. There you go. All right, so this is the right one. I'm just curious to see if they have the same part number now. Part number 5E082382283B. And the left one, exactly the same. So that's all good. So that's the right, that's the left. So there you go guys, so just gonna need to wait for this um, two other igniters, but I'm trying, I'm going to try to solve the bonnet problem, the hinges issue. And I, I was looking at it, and I think if I loosen that bolt, I should be able to bring the bonnet down until, so this part rests on the top here. So I'm just gonna lose that bolt, try to bring the bonnet down both sides. Let's see what happens. I've loosened the other side a little bit already. Let's lose this side a little bit. Mm. Wow. everyone next day I had a time slot for nine o'clock so it's nine or three with TPS trades part specialist so they are the group Volkswagen LG suppliers they supply for for the main dealers and I just picked up the parts that we need so I've got the bottom grill there and we've got these two massive boxes for the igniter and I was thought oh that's a big box for the igniter I was expecting to be like in a plastic bag or something it must be some sort of precaution obviously but there you go it's glued to the bottom there new igniter so i'm just gonna head home now and fit them in i haven't worked out how to to fix the bonnet hinges i was actually watching some tests you know the european crash test and those guys they deployed uh this active hinges igniters or active bonnet igniters from a mercedes and the guy just pushes back and i can see that you can do that but it's quite hard i tried yesterday i was thinking i was going to bend the hinges but let's go back fit them in and try to fix that bonnet so finally i worked out how these hinges work so obviously inside let me show you here don't know if you're gonna be able to see that well but this part other hinge here there's a little 
piece that locks in when it's pushed up. You can see it's on a spring there, so in each push, in each push this up. And I think it is easier to do from the bottom, to be honest with you. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can move it here. Oh. Anyway, I'm gonna do it from the bottom, but it's this piece here that needs to go up. All right, so that's pushed up now. Now the bonnet should, now the bonnet should go down. There you go. So that now is resting place here. I don't know if you need to loosen this bolt, but I have. So yeah, you probably have a, a torque spec for this bolt. I try to find everywhere information about the system, about this bolt torque and everything else. Couldn't find it, so I'm not gonna murder this bolt. So I'm just gonna tighten it off to keep it in place so it can work next time, I guess. And now we're gonna fit the new igniters. So first of all, it has this clip that's gonna go right at the back. So that's there. All right, let's plug this in. Hopefully it's not gonna go pop. There we go. And obviously you've got another clip there and a little hole inside that you can fix the plug that's that all right so there we go in place plugged in now i'm going to do the other side same procedure and then we're going to clear the fold see what's like all right guys so both ignited feet they still got their bag lights on and we have a couple of faults now short to ground, but they are all passive, they're not active anymore. And I believe it's probably because I disconnected them. But uh, let's see, let's clear these faults. Uh, another thing, as you can see, I don't have the crash data um, fault code here anymore because yesterday I did, um, I cleared it, the, the whole system, I did, I did the clear DTCs and all the modules. And that didn't come back, so I've got a chance here that I don't need to clear any clash da crash data on the airbag module. So let's clear this this uh, DTCs here, All right? Okay, All right. Airbag lights went off, went out. Just gonna cycle the ignition again. All right, so the airbag lights didn't come back. I'm going to the airbag module again. So yeah, stayed, stayed off. So, all right, no foot codes. I'm going to do a full scan now. And uh, let's see what, if we still have any other faults in any other module regarding this active bonnet pedestrian protection system. All right, so we do have a couple of faults, information control unit and central electrics. Let's see if they are related to this pedestrian protection system. So tank lid, unlock activation, electrical error, and functional limitation to uh, missing message. So I'm not worried about that. So we have no more faults regarding this system. Let's start the engine. The battery is a bit low. It's charging now. So there you go, no more messages, no more airbag lights on. So hunky dory. So 
So all I've got to do now is basically get the wipers back in, put the clips here for this scuttle panel, and then let's try to close the bonnet now. All right, so bonnet closes as it should. So it's not lifted up at the back anymore. So good. So perfect. Now what I've got to do as well, I've got another panel for the lower for the lower grill there. So just gonna put that back, try to make this front as good as we can. Right, so the grill is down at the bottom here. This other grill for the fog light. There's one missing on the right hand side, which we're gonna have to order. And this one we just ordered on eBay as well, 70 something pounds. But he asked me to look underneath for any damage. I mean, I just fitted this panel as well. And uh, the tray is broken down the tray. And I think this part of the, this part just under the radiator also, it's kind of pushed, pushed back as well. And uh, yeah, so he obviously hit the tree trunk and then obviously went over it. And you can see bits of trees still there. There you go. Bits of trees there. Got some needles here. So yeah, so that needs to be ordered as well. So there you go, pretty new system, this active bonnet pedestrian protection system. Something that I have to get educated on. Um, first time working on it, but changing the two igniters, um, sorted the problem, clearing the faults. Uh, we didn't have to clear any crash data on a um, airbag module. And then the hinges, at least for this car, you know, you have a little piece that when when the bonnet bends it locks in place so if you push that up you you know you don't need to replace the hinges or anything like that so underneath there obviously the guy went over the tree trunk and damaged underneath i think it damaged a little bit off the bracket that holds the 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 radiator but it's not leaking at the minute the coolant level is good now let me show you here how much i paid for everything so uh, this is the grill the two igniters were 96.52 in the end with VAT. So not too bad really. And, and that's it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Pretty interesting system. Uh, cars working as it should. No airbag lights, no message. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any comments, just leave it below and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.